This is a five inch quad. It's got 2203, 3000 KV motors on it, a Vista, the Nebula Pro on there, about 15 grams of motor wires wrapped around the frame, which is about 35 grams, an antenna that's entirely too large for it, and it doesn't even have T-mount like motor like prop adapters. It's got the full nut and bolt. And the quad itself comes in at 170, 8.9 grams with the 2S 1100 milliamp battery that I had spec'd to originally test it with, it comes in at 251.2 grams. Yesterday it was 249.8 grams. I don't know what happened today between today and yesterday, I gained a gram of dirt or something. And um, yeah, so you can clearly see that it's very, very easy to cut at least 15 grams, if not more, off this length of motor wire and all the motor wire and battery wire, motor wires wrapped around everywhere, antenna, the battery lead. Like there's, there's definitely a solid 15 grams to cut off this quad. However, I'm running 2S on a five inch quad, and we'll talk about that in a minute first. But before getting to that, let's real quick talk about this whole 250 gram thing. So I personally have kind of not rebelled against the 250 gram thing, I actually despise it because of what it stands for and the fact that I just don't agree with it. I personally think that if they're going for safety, 250 grams is not really safe in my opinion. I think it needs to be more like 100 to 150 grams. And if they're going for respect for the industry of hobby flight, which I think is very important in this world for those up and coming engineers and people that love to do this stuff, uh, it's not very respectable to respectful to the industry because 250 grams just isn't a whole lot of weight to do some of the things that you need to do in order to test some of the new equipment that you might want to work on. But Tommy Umagod has actually made me kind of look at this in a different different kind of perspective. Neither one of us were the first to do any of this stuff, but I saw his passion and his enjoyment and his excitement to genuinely try to design within this 250 gram number in order to get as close as he could possibly get to the quad that he's used to flying. And so I have been designing a bunch of really, really low weight things, not necessarily around the 250 gram number, but when I got close to 250 gram number on five inch that I was already designing, I was like, yeah, sure, why not? Let's give it a go. And I actually had a lot of fun with it. I would strongly encourage anybody to try and design within this 250 gram number or just select components to fit what you might want to build and try to balance the performance to what you want because it actually is really, really fun. Now, that being said, the performance of this thing on 2S, on this 2S battery, is not exactly the performance that I wanted it to have. Although on 2S, it performs significantly better than I even expected it to. I thought this thing would be a hell of a lot slower, a lot more pokey, and just not as quick as it actually is. Now where it does kind of fall flat is its overall ability to recover from dives and things, or really just the throttle response in general, is just a little bit laggy and lacking. Now, I personally turn off my throttle boost. I don't like to have any kind of artificial anything on my throttle. And uh, on the 1S 3-inch baby tooth, I still turn it off. And the new motors on that thing that we have in the store now uh, are specifically designed to kind of pull up the slack 
and give you that, that throttle response without having throttle boost on. I know the default throttle boost is usually at five on EMU flight and beta flight, but I personally don't like it, so I just turn that off completely, and the motors now inherently function to what I want them to. In this case, it's just not enough voltage to feed the motors, and this is a phenomenon that I uncovered a while back, and it's the reason why the Imperial and the standard um, five inch motor that recently released, which I don't know why I didn't bring one with me to show you, it's the pre exactly the previous video, it's the reason why that motor doesn't come in a 4S variety, and in fact, the 6S variety is the best variety to get because it really needs the voltage to get, to get the motor going. I can't define why I can't explain the physics behind it or why it is how it is but basically the throttle is anemic on this quad it's using 2203 motors if you were to move to a 2003 motor not the 2004s which are very popular right now the response would actually improve on 2s and I think it's because the stator has enough voltage to saturate itself with current. Now I'm mixing a bunch of concepts there and it may not make intuitive sense, but this is the intuition that I've gained from testing so many motors across the board. And the dilemma that we had with the larger than 2306 five inch motor is that on 4S, regardless of the KV that you gave the motor, it just didn't seem to have the same bite, the same power, the same response, the same performance that a smaller motor would have on 4S. Now, smaller in itself is a little bit deceiving as well because if you were to move this to a 2004 motor, it would actually also be more responsive, but not necessarily because you're now being able to, you don't have enough voltage to, well, to saturate the stator and pull the current that it needs to generate the torque that it needs, but more so because you have more magnet height and having the more magnet height will give the motor more magnet to pull and push against and it's overall gonna, gonna not perform better, perform differently for the voltage you're giving it. I hope that was all clear. Uh, ask questions if it wasn't. I, I honestly have, have no idea what the physics behind it is. I mean, I have a clue, but I cannot explain it at all. I just know what I've tested and what I've found in all these motor sizes. And so, speaking of motor size, I would say that it's very clear at this point what motor sizes are good and not so good in five inch. I mean, we've been dealing with five inch quads since the very beginning almost. I mean, beginning was like 10, 14 inch quads, but then we quickly moved into the five inch category and the original five inch quads were running on 1306 motors from forever ago on five inch props, which is ridiculous now. But um, yeah, that's what we were running. So it's, it's very clear that the 2204-ish motor size, even for these new low weight five inch props, is really the lowest that you might really want to go for the given performance that you might expect from a five inch quad. Now, if you're okay with kind of pokey performance, not really all the control that you could have, and, and you wanna sacrifice that for long flight times or low weight, that's fine, that's totally up to you. In my opinion, I kinda of don't see the point. If I'm gonna do that, I might as well move down in quad size and prop size and go with a quad that's gonna give me the actual control and performance I want and I'll sacrifice flight time and uh, efficiency for that control performance because at the end of the day, I want the thing to control really, really well. I wanna enjoy flying it. So 2203 with this lightweight 5125 prop, which I've gone with the tri-blade, there are smaller twin blade props from HQ and I think only HQ. Uh, I don't like them because I like tri-blades. <laughs> tri-blades have more response because they have a third blade that starts generating uh, thrust sooner as it's spitting up an RPM. They have, uh, I mean, some twin blades do have more response, but it depends what motor you put them on. In this category, a tri-blade is gonna have more response as long as it's on the appropriate motor. It has more grip. It overall just feels better to fly in the air, more attitude hold. Everything about a tri-blade just feels better to me. Now, quad blade is another story, but tri-blade versus twin blade in five inch, I strongly prefer the tri-blade. This is a 2.7 gram prop. It's a very suitable prop for the 250 gram quad range. And what I've shown here is that 250 grams, without even trying, isn't actually that hard to do. All you need to do is go down in battery size. 
Now for the 2203, 2204, and 2004, or 2004 motor size, I would recommend 3S at this point. I haven't fully tested 4S, but I definitely don't recommend 6S, and I'll talk about that in a minute as well. This battery is specifically selected because GNB makes phenomenal high C cells, and so this is their smallest, highest C rated cell, the 1100 milliamp cell. And so 2S, 1100 milliamp, 130C, whatever that means, it's the highest performing cell they make, actually can sustain the amps and performs really well from the battery side. The issue is just that it doesn't have enough voltage to give you the, to, for the motors to perform as you would want them to perform. So 3000 kV is a little bit much. I would say more like 2800 to 2900, maybe 2800 really is going to be the right kV plus 3S. A smaller capacity battery on 3S is going to be, in my opinion, just my opinion based on the testing I've done so far and everything in the past, what I'd recommend for the sub 250 gram class. And I think the battery sizes that are going to be popular, or if 250 grams even catches on, is going to be batteries in the weight range of around 80 grams. So that would mean that the quad needs to weigh around 170, 175-ish grams, around there, such that when you add an 80-gram battery, you get a 250-gram quad, or right around 250 grams. So what I've got here is the 1100 milliamp battery, which with it on is just about 250 grams, or the, the 2S battery. With the 3S version, which this is the real gem, comes out to... to 281 grams <laughs> Let me get a let me get a let me get a beat, I kick it, let me get a beat. Let me get a beat. Let me get a let me get a let me get a beat, I kick it, let me get a beat. Let me get a beat. Let me get a let me get a let me get a beat, I kick it for That is a gem of a battery. 3S, 1100 milliamp, highest C rating. It sustains all the amps for this quad to perform. It gives you three to four minute right run times at like race pace. It's really phenomenal to fly. It performs just beautifully and I'm really happy with the overall setup here. However, the motors are a little bit too high KV. I'm gonna drop them just a little, well, this is the older version of the motor. The newer version is actually already 2800, so it's the appropriate size motor. And um, I have a frame also that's designed to have a battery on top, so that's going to come as well. But there's a couple of things I want to talk about. 6S, I would not recommend on the Superlight class. I have tested it actually pretty extensively in the past. 6S batteries are really only useful when you need the voltage for the larger motors, like the FPV Cycles 5-inch motor that we just released. You really need 5S or 6S to get that motor to actually function or if you're trying to execute a really high load flight, as in either racing or carrying a lot of weight and going fast or something of that sort. These are the times when you need higher voltages. If you don't need the voltage, you really will benefit more from having more capacity in the battery because that's what's gonna lead to more flight time. When we fly these quads, we're not flying around at max clip all the time. We're actually flying around pretty docilely most of the time we just need the maximum power or all the performance when we want it or for overall control having a battery that performs really well will give you more control in the quad as well and that's where the capacity helps more it actually gives you a lot more flight time moving this quad to a 450 milliamp 6s battery dropping the motors down in the, in kv Remember, the equivalent KV of 6S is actually higher than the equivalent KV of a lower voltage system is going to give you so little flight time, it's not even worth flying. So I would strongly discourage moving something like this in 6S because it's just not worth it. 
Now, other things I want to talk about are the um, the frames in general. So I think there's going to be a whole slew of 250 gram frames that are going to be coming out pretty soon. There's a couple that have already shown their shown their face. I think designing within 250 grams is really fun. It really is fun. However, I think that we're all going to design 170 gram quads and the general community is going to start using 1100 milliamp 3S batteries or uh, like 850 to 900 milliamp 4S batteries. Around there is going to be the, or not 850, more like yeah, like 900, 850 milliamp 4S batteries is around there is going to be the battery that we actually settle on. And we're actually going to be flying 280 gram quads. And then we're all going to start throwing naked GoPros on there. And that's going to be the future of FPV truly, because I, I'm going to show you something in the next video about 250 gram stuff, which I haven't, I haven't even discussed with anybody yet, but it, it's, it's, it's quite capable. <laughs> I never expected it. So this frame has four millimeter arms and uh, 1.5 millimeter plates on the side here. It's really just a frame that I arbitrarily threw together just to test things. I put the um, flight controller and the Vista side by side because I don't like them stacked at all. They don't have the same mounting platform. And I know there's 20 by 20 all in one boards, but I don't like them because there aren't a lot of options. There's a lot more all in one board options since we started making the two thick boards way, way, way back when. So uh, it's much more likely to run into a, a whoop mount board that's going to perform a lot better than this um, uh, 20 by 20 platform. And this particular board is the Daytone Mamba, which we actually strayed away from because it has, a, has um, consistency issues from batch to batch. And also it claims to do 4S 25 amp, but this thing struggles to do 15 amp and 3S. And that's really what I would rate it at. These all-in-one boards are more so limited by the electronic design of the PCB more than the actual FETs and electronics actually on the board itself. That's what we found in designing a bunch of them. And uh, the iFlight H7 board is by far the most capable all-in-one whoop board. It's the only one I would recommend. I wouldn't recommend it, but I would suggest trying for a full five inch. There's people running it on full seven inch actually, which is ridiculous. Seven inch and the 30 millimeter motor, motors that we have in the FPV cycle store. Um, otherwise, the Cadex Nebula Pro is excellent it's half the weight of the full dji camera it's a little bit smaller it's a little bit cheaper and it has about 95 percent of the the visual performance so that's great there's a lot more to talk about this frame is actually overkill the four millimeter arms and two millimeter body plates are really 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 rigid and i really like to see that in a frame that weighs only 35 grams which is it's it's is a good weight. The top mount version of this, which is really nifty looking, I'm gonna get a prototype pretty soon. That comes in around 39, it's gonna come in around 38, 39 grams. So I'm really excited about that, having it be such low weight. Last thing I wanna point out is that sub 30 gram frames are nothing new. People have been designing super, super light five inch frames forever, literally since we started running five inch. The difference now is that um, the drivetrains that we have are a little bit more advanced. The 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 all-in-one boards are a little bit more advanced. Now we have a Vista on board. I personally don't like taking apart a Vista. I want my Vista to be, I don't want to have to go through the work to take it apart and even remotely risk getting a water droplet on there and breaking it or something. And I don't want anybody else to have to do that either. So I prefer to design with a full-size Vista. And um, the ultimate frame that will come out, which I guess I'll announce now, I'm working on it um, just because it's fun. We'll have the Vista full size with the aluminum plates in there and expecting it to be sub 250 gram all up weight. Lots more coming, so much more to talk about. Thanks for watching, floss your teeth, bye.